Discussions with the Creationist Part 5 Species versus Kinds In this video, Christopher critiques a definition of species and refuses to acknowledge that his interpretation is wrong. Here are some examples. Species, an individual belonging to a group of organisms or the entire group itself, having common characteristics and usually are capable of mating with one another. Taken from Biology Online Dictionary. Read carefully. Here's what it's saying. A creature or creatures that have something in common could be anything from color to organs that may or may not be an individual that may or may not be a group that may or may not be able to mate with each other. This definition tells us absolutely nothing. I encourage readers to look up other definitions from many sources, and you'll find this to be a consistent problem. There is no good definition for species, and the atheists often don't know this because they rarely stop to think about it. You're very good at modifying meaning of things. This definition, species, an individual belonging to a group of organisms or the entire group itself, having common characteristics and usually are capable of mating with one another, is clear enough, and you assumed it meant what it does not. You're very good at making vague and general statements that explain nothing. Saying it's clear enough doesn't make it clear enough just because you said that. I get evolutionists on here all the time that think, if I speak therefore I answered the problem. That's really bad logic. The definition says individual as in the species of this fish is blueback herring. Group as in the human species has done great things. The term can be used in both forms. Common characteristics refers to distinctive traits not traits that are shared with other species. Usually capable of mating, meaning under normal circumstances. Again, at some point, an individual dog with dog characteristics has to appear. At some point, a blueback herring with blueback herring characteristics has to appear. If there is only one of these creatures that dies without ever reproducing, was it or was it not a species of its own? By the definition provided, we have no clue. It's much easier to stick with the kinds, not species. Where's the scientific evidence for evolution? Horses and donkeys can reproduce, true but their offspring can't. These two species' DNA is similar, but different enough that their offspring is defective. If anything, this is the exception that confirms the rule. A color between yellow and orange. You're nitpicking over small details. One in 10,000 donkeys are fertile. Lauren Travis, The Mule, page 6869. You're the one that's nitpicking over small details. I've asked you if you believe something, and you can't give me a straight yes or no. If I was asked, do you believe elephants are orange? I would say no. Then explain myself. A politician's answer, which is what you're doing, would be, what do you mean by orange? Without answering the question, you're nitpicking. Where's your scientific evidence for evolution? Or was Wikipedia all you had? I can also be hypercritical over details. In the Bible it says that Jebus was the son of God and it also says that he's the son of Joseph. This is inconsistent and makes the whole Bible void and irrelevant. I am a brother, an uncle, and a husband, all at the same time. I am the son of my father. I'm also the son of my grandfather. 
I guess that makes me inconsistent and irrelevant. You're wasting my time. Where's your scientific evidence for evolution? As for Dr. Moore's, I don't know. I've listened to that part of the debate, and I think he explained very well why species can be seen as vague. Refer to the color spectrum example. Meaning you also don't know. That's my point. It's not science. It's speculation. Sorry, but kind doesn't have a formal definition in the Bible either. In the same presentation, Kent Hovind's definition of kind is... So I'm, I'm not, I can't give you a solid definition of the word. But Noah's Ark doesn't need a definition of species to fail. Two individuals' offspring would interbreed and the kind would go extinct. Plus, according to your trusty Bible, bats are birds. <laughs> species doesn't have a formal definition. That's a great one-liner for your atheist friends. But that's not gonna roll here. And you put your trust in believing you come from a rock 4.6 billion years ago? <laughs> I admire your faith. I really do. And you don't even see. You did exactly what I just wrote about. Bats are birds? And then laugh it off. You took your preconceived modern definition of species and retroactively apply it to the Bible. Thank you for demonstrating that point. I'll have to keep this documented. Now, where was the scientific evidence for evolution you were talking about? Regarding the definition of species, I compared this to the color spectrum. Give me an exact definition of color, like yellow. If you can't, then colors are just pure speculation. Colors, like species, include a range of individual values. Two instances could be almost identical, and you couldn't see the difference. But for colors, their frequency is different. And for dogs, the DNA is different. The bats and birds is an example of how primitive the men who wrote the Bible are. They also thought that a whale was a big fish with air inside. The funny part is that you believe this is the absolute truth, the source of all that is good and moral, and you can't even do what Jebus says you can do without even trying it. This is typical gullible behavior. In the end, we may be wasting our time because you don't even want to make an effort to understand the fine minutia of biology. In retrospect, this was his main argument for the whole discussion. Since the definition of species is vague, thus evolution is completely wrong. This is a perfect example for the continuum fallacy. This type of fallacy simply says if a concept is vague, then the concept is invalid. And a good example of a continuum fallacy is like this. Does one grain of wheat form a heap of wheat? No, it doesn't. Do two grain of wheat form a heap? No, they don't. Three grains? Nope. In conclusion, no matter how many grains of wheat you had, you will never get a heap. Thus, heaps don't exist. There are many other variations of this fallacy. For example, how hot it is right now, if I have a beard or not, and, and so on and so forth. The heap of wheat story is a perfect example for the Soritz paradox. And one solution for the Soritz paradox is the group consensus, which means you ask a bunch of people, does this constitute a, a heap of wheat? And if most people says, say yes, then it is one. And I guess this is what people do when they use the word uh, kind. But it's not very scientific. A better solution to this paradox is to use fuzzy logic, where we take propositions and we apply 
probabilistic type values to them.